Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Madeline McCain's disappearance. And I do want to give a little bit of disclaimer. This particular case got a lot of media coverage um, back when it happened in 2007. Um, so there, during research, there were a lot of contradicting uh, sources. If I did miss anything or I got something incorrectly, please leave it down in the comment section, your sources, um, as well as the correct information. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe and let up button down there. And if you want to learn more about Madeline McCain, then just keep on watching. So Kate and Jerry McCain were both born in 1968 and both lived in Rothley, Leicestershire. I'm I'm sorry if I butcher the names. They were both Roman Catholic. Kate was actually from Hilton near Liverpool, and she graduated in 1992 with a degree on medicine from the University of Dundee. She actually quit her job in order to become a stay-at-home mom, uh, but she would also work for some child charities. Now Gerald, which is um, Jerry's name, he was also a doctor. He was born in Gaslow and graduated from the University of Gaslow with a degree in physio physiology and in sports science in 1989. Now in 1992, he applied to get his master's degree And since 2005, he has been a cardiologist. And he still currently practices. Since 2005, he has been a consultant cardiologist at Glenfield Hospital in Le Le Leicester. He is actually now a renowned cardiologist, as well as a professor of cardiac imagery. Now, Kate and Jerry met in 1993 in Gaslow, and they actually married a year after. And unfortunately, they tried to have children, but they couldn't get pregnant. So they decided to give IBF a try. And this is when they were able to have children. Madeline was actually born May 12, 2003. And this year she would have turned 18 years old. After Madeline, they actually had twins and their names were Am Amelie and Sean. They were born in February of 2005 and they're currently 16 years old. So um, some of the distinctions of Madeline is that she has a stripe on her pupil um like on her iris that is very distinct um i'm i did some research and apparently this is actually very common to be born with and um you're gonna see a picture right now of her and her blue beautiful blue eyes she had blonde hair and she was just she was described um, as a very happy child when she was little she was always smiling always laughing as a little girl, she was always a very popular amongst children. Everyone wanted to be Madeline's friend. She had a very happy personality. And like most girls, um, she loved her dolls and wearing dresses. She is described as a girl that had a lot of energy in her. She always wanted to go on an adventure. She enjoyed swimming as well as running. Because of her very loud personality, um, her parents would always say that obviously their house was not the quietest in their neighborhood. Madeline was described as a warm, life-enriching little person and that she brought a lot of joy to anybody that had met her. My kids arrived on April 28th, 2007 for their seven-night spring break in Praia da Luz and this was a popular this was a small village with a population of a thousand known and this place was known as little britain just because a lot of uh, british people would go here um on vacation and there were a lot of british tourists 
they had booked through a company called the British Holiday Company. When they arrived at the complex, they were placed in apartment 5A along with all of their friends. There were seven other families that were friends of theirs and they all stayed in very close apartments. Now, in this apartment complex, there were a bunch of apartments and they were particularly owned to different people. And, for example, the owner of the apartment where they, where the McCann's stayed was owned by a teacher from Liverpool. And he actually did own several properties that were rented by this company. The McCann's went to this family vacation with seven friends and eight children. And most evenings they would dine together, the adults, at a uh, tapas restaurant that was in the actual resort at which the media actually called them the Tapas 7. And so the Tapas 7 included Fiona and David Payne, Jane Tanner and her partner Russell O'Brien, and Matthew Oldfield, who was with his wife, Rachel Oldfield. Now, the Tapas restaurant where Jerry and Kate were having dinner with their friends was about 50 yards from apartment 5A. And it was just across the other side of the swimming pool below their apartment 5A. Now, when they were having dinner, they all agreed that every 20 minutes they were going to go and check on the children. And so they decided that they would leave their children in the apartments while they would, would go and have dinner with the friends. And they would... And they decided that they would go in and check on the children every 20 minutes. This is something that they had done every, every time they would go and have dinner at 8.30. If you think about it, anybody that would watch the family um, would know their schedule and they would know when the children were alone by themselves. So I don't know, I don't understand how they didn't think of that. So they decided that they would rotate who would go and check on the children on thursday may 3rd 2007 kate and jerry picked up their kids from the um kids club and took them to their apartment where they um they had dinner and they were just prepping the kids for them to go to bed that day the kids obviously were exhausted from playing at the um from playing at the kids club and Kate mentions that she remembers how Madeline was exhausted and she actually fell asleep before she was going to finish the book that she was reading to them before bed. Around 8 30 Kate and Jerry made their way to the tapas restaurant where they were going to meet their friends. Now at 9 05 Gary made his first round to go and check on the children. He went through the back of the apartment and through the patio door which was unlocked because that one could only lock it from the inside and he checked on the kids and they were all sleeping and everything was okay now i do want to comment on this because um if i showed you guys a picture of where the apartment is they instead of they decided to leave the side door open which was like the patio door open um they decided to leave this one because it was more convenient for the parents to go in through there instead of going through the front door which was locked and check on the children and they did, in one of the interviews, they did say that they decided to do this because they, um, they didn't want to make so much noise when they would come in and check on the children. Which, again, if somebody were to be watching them and observing their moves and everything, because unfortunately people do that. And I, maybe they didn't think of that, but they left the side patio door open. Now, at 9.25, Kate... Madeline's mom was gonna go and check on the children but their friend Matt offered to check on them because he was gonna make the round to check on his children too. Now Jerry decided to go into the room just like Jerry did so through the side uh, patio door but he did not go into the actual room so he didn't actually check if the children were there. Now at around 10 p.m. Kate makes her way to the apartment, again through the patio door, and she said that she was surprised to see more light than she expected. She said that the door of the bedroom was actually widely open, 
and she was surprised to see that it was because she recalls that the last time she checked on the kids were not the door was not open like that as she got closer to the door wind actually shut the door closed and when she opened the door again she realized that the window was open and that Madeline's bed was empty this is when Kate ran back to the tapas restaurant and started yelling they they've taken her they've taken her um, and if you pay attention to that she ran back to the tapas restaurant so that means that she left her two other children in the room where the sister just vanished it's just it's a little bit odd everybody was notified and a lot of the guests and staff started looking for Madeline and um, the police actually said that she might have just wandered off um, and she was like asleep by a bush that's why they couldn't like find her and the police that actually bring um, dogs to look for Madeline um, but unfortunately they just they went around the premises and they just couldn't find her and so this is when the FBI of Portugal was contacted so this is where the police start investigating and it kind of gets a little bit frustrating and you'll see what I mean uh, when investigators got to apartment 5d they were very surprised to find that the um, apartment was not preserved in order to make sure that the evidence was still there or any um, type of clues that they could have gotten a lot of people were in and out of that apartment while they're trying to find her and so unfortunately a lot of the evidence was tampered with according to some of the witnesses um, they said that Kate was very insistent in saying that she was taken and that she did not wander off as police were saying now after the disappearance a member of the tapa 7 which was jane tanner said that she actually saw something that might be important to the investigation she said that on her way back from checking on her children she this was around 9 15 she actually saw a man crossing the road from the corner from more than McCann's apartment and you can see kind of like where um, Jane actually saw the man and this man was actually carrying a child and she was wearing light colored pajamas and bare feet and bare feet now obviously after Madeline's disappearance it dawned on her that that might have been Madeline and that she literally saw how a man was taking her there was another witness that said that he saw in a, like a man carrying a child as well. So a lot of people think that, you know, that was one of the um, suspects and that that was actually Madeline being taken from the apartment. Tenor did give a brief description of the man. And he described him as white, dark haired, 5 feet 7 inches, so you like a little bit tall. A little bit more on the taller side um, of southern or Mediterranean appearance and around 35 to 40 years old he was wearing gold or beige trousers as well as a dark jacket now unfortunately police um, actually failed to seal off the apartment and there was a lot of like ashes from like the police like cigarettes and stuff in the apartment again not making sure uh, to preserve the evidence if there was any in the apartment another thing that happened was that the police actually let the McCann's move their possessions possessions to another apartment and by the time officers went back to the ocean club which was the name of the resort and cleaners at the resort actually had gone into the apartment and clean and wash off the sheets blankets and pillowcases which is just so bad so so bad I mentioned uh, the same thing in the John Bonet um, case how they didn't close off the the place the crime scene because it is a crime scene like somebody disappeared I mean in John Bonet's you know unfortunately they did find the body but in this case I think it was more vital because it was a disappearance and I think that it could have made such an impact if they would have closed the apartment and actually processed everything that was in there instead of letting them at Cain's take their things to another apartment like not making sure the cleaners were not going in just I feel like they made so many mistakes that if could have helped 
so much to this particular investigation that it's so unfortunate. Now, a source of the uh, Portuguese police did say some important clue uh, clues could have been found on those items besides hair which was sent to the institute. They forgot that the items in the bedroom could hypothetically have had fibers belonging to a possible abductor um, or even a fingerprint. So that like tells you so much how they did not follow the correct protocol and like I mentioned before there were so many people coming in and out of that apartment um, that it, it just shouldn't have happened. Now, as Portuguese police made it um, official with a statement to the media, the McCain's actually gave a statement while they were holding um, Madeline's favorite toy. And Gary actually said, words cannot describe the anguish and despair that we are feeling as the parents of our beautiful daughter, Madeline. We request to, we request that anyone who may have information relating to Madeline's disappearance, no matter how trivial, contact the Portuguese police and help us get her back safely. They also said, please, if you have Madeline, let her come home to her mommy, daddy, brother, and sister. They were just literally just making a plea to whoever had Madeline. Now, 12 days after Madeline's disappearance, Robert Murat... Uh, he was a 34-year-old British Portuguese property consultant, became the first suspect. As three members of the top of seven, Fiona Payne, Russell O'Brien, and Rachel Oldfield, said that they had seen Murat outside the apartment 5A shortly after the disappearance. Um, another two witnesses, uh, an Asian club nanny, as well as two British holiday um, tourists that were there actually mentioned that they had seen Murat outside the apartment as well. Now, this was not surprising how because of how close Murat lived from apartment 5A. So, this like resort, and I'll try to insert a picture of kind of like the outside. Um, the resort was kind of like in the middle of where other houses were outside. Murat was investigated and he did say that that evening he was with uh, his mother and um like in his home so that was kind of like the alibi that they had beginning on may 15th of 2007 7 uh, murat's home was searched the pool was drained his cars his computers phones and videotapes were examined as well as his uh, garden was searched with sniffer dogs and as well as two of his associates were questioned and in March of 2008, um, one of those associates had his car set to fire with the word Fala, which is speak in Portuguese. And um, there was nothing in Mura's anything, properties or anything that could link the disappearance to Madeline. And Murat's um, suspect status was lifted on uh, July 21st, 2008, when unfortunately the case was archived. Now on June of 2007, the McCain's actually became suspects of Madeline's disappearance. Some highlighted alleged um, inconsistencies that they found in their statements, and they were implying that uh, Jane Tanner had been um, had made that story up about the man he, she saw with um, carrying a child. Now, among some of the inconsistencies. The question relied on whether the McCann's had checked in on the kids either through the front door or through the side um, patio door. The couple had entered through the front door of the apartment 5A and that this door was locked. And like I mentioned, the patio doors could only be locked from the inside. So the parents did let that... And so the parents did let that patio door unlocked so it would be easier for them to check on the children. There was another inconsistency about whether the front door was ever locked and this is because Jerry told the Sunday Times in 2007 in December that they had used the front door earlier in the week but it was next to the children's bedroom so they didn't they started using the bat the patio door instead just like I mentioned because they didn't want to make too much noise and wake up the kids. Now 
the inconsistencies kept popping up because like i mentioned you know she instead of taking both of her children um of the twins back to the restaurant with her and letting everybody know that madeline was missing she decided to just leave them now the apparent discrepancies between um the statements Contributed to the view um, that the police had that there was actually no abduction and having Kate scream that they had taken her That was actually like a suspicion for the police Kind of like questioning like who do you think took her now? There were suspicions that uh, Madeline had actually died in apartment 5a as a result of the accident as it is rumored that the McCann's and some of the other families had actually given the kids um something so that they could stay asleep and that her parents maybe had given her way more than it was supposed to and that she had actually passed away now in 2010 um, carlos anjos a former head of the police detectives union in portugal actually told bbc pa panorama that most portuguese investigators still believe that madeline had died in that apartment from an accident now in 14 years since madeline's disappearance Madeline's case has become one of the most notorious cases worldwide. Now, like I mentioned, one of the theories was that, you know, Madeline's parents were actually involved in her disappearance. And the theory suggested that before leaving for dinner, um, you know, Madeline's parents gave, her, gave them a sedative. And unfortunately that, you know, sh they had accidentally given her too much. After more than a decade of having leads and just false alarms about the disappearance of Madeline, the German police actually made a major announcement on the McCain case and apparently they had found the actual person that actually took Madeline. This was a 43-year-old convicted sex offender with an extensive criminal record. His name is Christian B. He was born in German... He was born in the German state of ba Bavaria, and he grew up in a children's home, so he was part of the foster care system. In 1994, as a teenager, he was actually convicted of, assault, of sexually assaulting a child, but he actually flew to Portugal and um, escaped his sentence. Now, he was extradited to Germany in 1999, and this is where he served the jail time. He did spend a lot of his 20s and 30s living a trans transient life, working just weird jobs and just running from the police. Now, in 2007, he actually returned to Portugal and he was actually living in Praia de Luz. And this is where Madeline had disappeared. Same year. He was actually living in a Volkswagen van, and I'll insert a picture. And they identified him as a suspect in the investigation. They said that Christian was a drug dealer that had robbed many houses in Praia de Luz. Now, in December of 2019, he was actually convicted in sexually assaulting a 72-year-old um, woman in 2005. Currently, Christian is in jail in northern Germany. And he actually did appeal um, the um, conviction of the sexually assaulted um, woman, but that was actually denied. And he did wanted he did want to fight that the extradition was invalid, but he's still in jail to this day. So unfortunately, we still don't know what happened to Madeline. Um, it is just so heavy. Um, there were a lot of theories. A lot of people, you know, said that you know the parents had done something to her and i feel like that's for me especially i don't know why it's such a tough like theory to believe like how first of all like why would you even give your kid something to um have them like pass out like really like spending time with your friends in a restaurant is way more important than your child's like safety i just the fact that they left the side door open there's just so many things that to me i'm just like wow they just did not do this right the right way you know but that's my opinion. Please let me know down in the comment section if I did miss anything. There was so much media around it that there were a lot of resources um, to research from. And um, I did like, there were a couple times that I was just like, wow, there's like 
completely contradicts like this other thing so please leave down anything below if i did miss anything you know i just try my best to do research on the cases i did want to mention something that it caught my eye and it was from tiktok and on tiktok i found this video on my for you page because i mean i was researching the case and so um this guy and i'm gonna put up the video like right here so you guys can watch it because the guy says that this may be madeline mccain and she has the same um slit in her like iris in her eye and i'm gonna you're gonna see in the video and i don't know she just resembles madeline she just shared some uh pictures of herself when she was little because um i guess in that specific video um that the guy is kind of like um doing like a green screen um that video is no longer up in her account i think her account is private now um but in that video i guess there were like comments saying like oh you should get like a dna test um and she shared like pictures of her when she was little and she does resemble quite a bit um of madeline you know there's many rumors there was another tiktok video i'm gonna try and see if i can find it um of this guy that was um on holiday like he was like on vacation by a place by Praia de Luz um, and there was this one girl crossing the street um, and she looked very very similar to Madeline as if she would like be right now I think it was like last year or two years ago and she did have the the, the um, it's not a mole but um, that characteristic on her leg on her left leg and that is it for today's video I hope you guys learned something from this case and all the products that I used into this video are going to be linked down in the description box as well as my social media and until then I'll see you guys on the next one bye